This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So working in the Python is great because you can create any objects you want. You can have them move around, you can rotate the view around, but it's really easy to lose track of where you are. Once you start rotating things around, it can be really easy to lose track of which way was supposed to be up, which way was supposed to be down, which way was supposed to be forward and backward. Here, for example, I've got two spheres. And apart from going back and looking at the positions that I created, I really have no idea which one is where. This one I'm pretty sure is close to the center because it's I'm rotating and it's not rotating as much. But it can be it can be easy to get lost, especially when you start doing the shift click uh, to pan around. Um, you can get lost pretty easily in this three-dimensional space. Now, I, I showed on another video how to make a space background um, to kind of give you a little bit of an idea of how things are moving around. But what I want to give you today is a quick little function that you can drop into any vPython program and have it give you a set of X, Y, and Z axes. So uh, what we'll do, so my goal here is to make a function. We're going to call it uh, make underscore axes. And I want you to be able to take this little snippet of code and copy and paste it into anything you're running in vPython and just have a nice set of axes that you can use. So let's say, for example, we want to make an x-axis that's equal to, uh, see, that's going to be an arrow. It's going to start at the origin, 0, 0, 0. And we're going to have it an axis of vector 100 zero, zero. and let's give it a color of red. I don't know if there's a convention somewhere of colors you use for axes, but we'll give it a, a color of red there and then we'll return. Uh, this isn't going to return anything, it's just we'll, we'll put it in so it knows to, to go back to the main function. Uh, and where did my... Oh right, I actually have to run the function, don't I? Excuse me. So then you would just have to run this function, make axes press control 2. There we go, that's better. Now that obviously is not long enough for this problem, right? I mean I could leave it like that, but that's obviously not long enough for, for this problem in particular. So what I'd like to be able to do is for you as the user to be able to specify a length. So we'll say length here. Um, that turned blue. Is that going to be a problem? I don't think that's going to be a problem. I guess we'll find out. Uh, and so what we'll do is we'll take this axis vector, we'll multiply it by length, and now let's say I want to have this thing go out to, let's say, 4, control 2, and there's my x-axis going out to 4. Um, now that's nice to have an x-axis going that way, it's also customary to have it going the other way to show you the negative x direction. So all I would have to do would be to say negative x-axis going to equal x-axis because it's the same thing and then I could just say negative x-axis dot axis get multiplied by negative one. Let's say control two. Uh oh, neg axis not defined. Uh, oh, negative x-axis. There we go. Control two. Um, oh yeah, excuse me, excuse me. I don't want to say x-axis. I want to say dot clone. There we go. We'll say control two, right? So we're using the clone function here to create a copy of it. And then that second line will flip it around this way. Cool, so we've got an X axis. Let's try to add in a Y axis now. I should just be able to take this little snippet here, copy and paste, make this a Y axis. Uh, and now I'll just switch these around here and we'll go with uh, green, how about that? Actually, it does make sense, yeah, because the color code is red, green, blue. We'll be going X, Y, Z that way. Uh, and then we'll call this the negative Y axis equals Y axis dot clone. Negative Y axis is axis going to get flipped around. So now I should have green going up and down. And so there you go. You have a traditional kind of X and Y axes uh, there in the screen. So now when I'm rotating around, I get an idea of where the origin is. I get an idea of you know, where those spheres are in relation to my measurement axes. Um, and now, of course, vPython works in 3D, so we'll take the same thing, make it the Z axis now. Z, uh, let's see, so I'll need to bump this over this way, and let's make this one blue, red, green, blue. 
and we'll make a negative z axis equals z axis dot clone. I probably don't need to name all of these, um, but you never know. You might want to do something with these axes later on, you know, scale them or something like that. And we'll press Control 2. So there you go. You've got an x axis, a y axis, and a z axis. Now, Again, you might get turned around a little bit. It might be easy to forget which one is X, which one is Y, and which one is Z. So we can also add some labels onto these things. So let's try adding um, an X label equal to label. I'll make its text equal to X. Um, and we'll make its color equal to the color of the x-axis, so x-axis dot color, and I need to give this thing a position, so we'll say position equals x-axis dot pause plus x-axis dot axis, so that will put it at the end point of the x-axis. I'll, I'll need to adjust this a little bit, but let's see how far we need to adjust it. Okay, not too much. I'll probably need to bring it up a little bit. Um, so let's do this. Let's make a fudge factor here of, uh, let's say, 0. Point, uh, let's say 100th of the length, and we'll see how well that scales. Uh, so let's see, so our position here is going to be plus vector 0, fudge 0. And I think for aesthetics, I think I'd like to turn that border off. So that's the box variable, we're going to set that equal to false. All right, cool. Um, let's make, uh, do I want that to be opaque? I don't know if I want that to be opaque. I guess, I guess you can see it better this way if that, if the background is opaque. So I guess I'll leave it like that. Uh, maybe I'll make that one of the options. Um, so let's see, let's go with, uh, let's get that up a little bit more. Um, Let's try a tenth of the length. Two. Yeah, there we go. I think that's good. They can probably come down a little bit. So maybe half of that. Control two. A um, little bit more up. Maybe like a, a, what is that? Six hundredths of the way up. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, and then what I can do is just copy and paste this. Paste, paste, and now do the same thing here. So for the Y label, I want my text to be Y. Um, I want it to be the color of the Y axis. And let's see, that's going to need to be to the right a little bit. So from my fudge factor, we'll move fudge into the X axis, or in the X direction. And then we'll make a Z label. Call this Z, Z axis dot color, uh, Z axis dot pause. Oh, whoops, excuse me, I need to make this Y axis. I wasn't done changing all my X's into Y's yet. Y and Y, Z and Z. And we'll go zero comma fudge. Oh, do I want that to go in the Z direction? No, I don't want that to go in the Z direction, excuse me. Um, where, what direction do I want that to go in? I think I want that to go to the right again. Uh, so let's leave that as fudge comma zero comma zero. All right, let's see how that looks. Cool, I've got my X, my Y, my Z. Can even do a right hand rule to confirm x cross y gives me z and uh and these and the, the the you can see the labels follow along with the axes when i rotate or pan this view uh those axis labels stay in the same place i'm not going to label the negatives like i'll have the negative axes there as a reference but i kind of like this with just the x y and z labeled that way you can tell which one's the positive direction cool so i suppose a user might want to control this later. So I suppose what I also need to include is an option for you to make these things invisible. Now the easy way to do that would be to compound all of these things and then you could just control the compound. But currently labels cannot be, um, cannot be added to a compound. So I suppose the easiest way to do that would be to define uh, Remove, hmm. Let's do this, remove axes. Oh, actually, how about this? Let's just call this uh, turn axes, and then we'll have on or off. And then we'll say if 
on or off equals on, then what I can do is say uh, x axis dot visible equals. Oh, actually, there's an easier way to do this, isn't there? So, what we'll do is we'll make a list. We'll call it axes equal to a list with x axis, negative x axis, same mistake I made last time. Copy paste, y axis, negative y axis, paste, z axis, negative z axis, and then x label, y label, z label. And then what I can just do is say for shape in axes shape dot visible equals false. Excuse me, we're turning it on, so turn that to true. And for shape in axes shape dot visible equals false. Uh, oops, excuse me, I need to put in another if here, right? It's a little bit iffy, Brian. Um, if on or off, why is it ORR? -R? There we go. If on or off equals off. And we can make this, uh, let's, let's add in some grace for capitalization. So we'll have an on or if it equals on or, oops. Getting my ons, my ors, and my uvs confused. I don't even have the word of on here. At least I'm not supposed to. Off or off. So if you put in a string, so if you say turn axes on or off, it will turn the axes on or off. So let's try this. So let's uh, let's see. While true, rate of once per second. We'll do one frame per second. So we'll do, uh... oh wait, wait, yeah, 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 I know what I want to do, I know what I want to do. We'll put in a sleep for one second, and we'll say, uh, turn axes on, and then we'll do sleep for one second, turn axes off. So this is gonna, this sh if I did this right, this should be flickering on and off in the screen. Oh, axes not defined. Turn axes, shape in axes. Oh, right, right, right. I need to make those a global. Global axes. There we go. Global axes. Um, I shouldn't need to make those. I mean, they're global either way, but I shouldn't need to put those a reference to those out here. I don't think. Turn axes. Oops, axes. Axes. There we go. Of course, I put a typo on the one thing that would tell me that the code was working. All right, turned off. Cool. Now, of course, you're not probably not going to have your axes flicker like this, I'm guessing. But this means in your code, you can turn your axes on and off. Like if there's a point in the animation where you want them and a point in the animation where you don't. Or you could put make a little button off to the side to turn your axes on and off. So there you go, little gift to you. Um, if you want to have some axes in your code, you can just copy and paste this uh, 26 lines and uh, get yourself some axes in vPython. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.